I have been not really finding a passion for my uh, call it career path. So I've been trying a lot of things, but not really feeling the burning desire for uh, any of them. And um, uh, I'm trying to find the answer for that and just to kind of feel what's... But you see, don't you just love it that in sort of moving around through things that aren't very satisfying, the desire for something more satisfying comes. In other words, think about this vibrational escrow that you are in the process of accomplishing. So when you are doing work that isn't very appealing, you want more appealing work. When you're doing work that isn't very satisfying, you want more satisfying work. When your work feels not uplifting enough, you want to be more of an uplifter. When your work doesn't pay enough, you want it to pay more. When the people that you are working with don't recognize your value, you want your value to be more noted. When you don't feel that your work is important enough to make a difference, you want your work to make a difference. So all of this time that you are spending as you are sort of sifting through is creating a vibration vibrational escrow and it's so interesting Jer Jerry and Esther were having this discussion as they were driving up yesterday once something manifests in your experience it is so it feels so easy to have accomplished it once it happens where before it happens it doesn't feel so easy to you but if you understood that it's over there in vibrational escrow and that it's on the brink of happening then you would soften your resistance and things would come to you more readily so when you say, I cannot find my career path, what you mean is, I haven't gotten the vivid idea and I haven't taken the exact action steps in order to bring myself into view of what I really, really want to do. And we want to say, that may be true, but something else even more wonderful is happening. Because all that you are living is creating a powerful vibrational escrow. And here's the thing we want you to hear. This is the answer to your question. You find that path by feeling your way to it. In other words, first it might feel like revenge, then it might feel like anger, then it might feel like frustration, then it might feel like overwhelmment, but then it might feel like hope. And about the time it begins feeling like hope and belief, you'll begin to say, I think I'm getting a glimpse of my path. We want you to leave this gathering feeling something that we feel so powerfully and of course it's easy for us because we've seen what you've lived and we've seen what you've put in vibrational escrow but we could even speak it clearly to you and you still wouldn't be able to hear it because when your vibration is I can't find my path even if someone is saying here it is you can't find your path so you want to start turning in the stream by saying things like I've lived enough life to know the things I don't want to do. And I am getting a sense that whatever it is that I do, I want it to be fun. And I want to feel free within it. And I want it to pay really well. And I want it to be influential and valuable in helping others. I want to be the teacher and the uplifter that I innately know that I was born to be. And I want to have a glorious time doing it. And I want the ideas to never stop flowing. And I want there to be another project and another project and another project for me to sink my teeth into. Now that's the way you want to feel. But when you don't feel that way, when you saying I don't know what I'm supposed to do and I sure don't like what I'm doing you've got to find softer words that at least let you drop the oars so that the stream can begin to turn you Jerry and Esther have had an interesting experience this last week they're busy as they can be so many things going on in their experience and they have contracts that they've signed for book projects and they are entering into some other negotiations for some fun projects and they look at each other every now and again and say we must be out of our minds because we were already really busy and now we're saying yes to even more things and so they've been teasing one another about that and over the time that they've been staying in Southern California they come out two times a year and spend a few weeks each time they bring their bus and they park it in San Diego area and they use it as sort of the basis for what they're doing while they're in California they like the area very much so one by one the parks that let them stay there with their monster bus have been closing and there's just one left and this one is now saying to them we don't know how long we're going to be here because the city really owns this land they've been leasing to us and has decided that they want to put some other project there and so we may be losing our lease and so 
When Jerry and Esther first heard that, they felt great discomfort because it has really been slim pickings about where they're going to put their bus. And in that discord, they launched a rocket of desire. We want to find a place that we can put our bus. So... Over the months that they, since they've heard that, they've been talking about it and thinking about it and talking about how much they like the area and how much they like the ocean air and how much they like the ocean view. And whenever they think about the park closing, they've been launching rockets, part of the rockets based on from what they don't want, many of them based upon what they do want. And without being consciously aware of it, they had created quite a magnificent vibrational escrow relative to what they're going to do with the bus. Then one day... Jerry said to Esther, you know, we should look for some property somewhere in the area where we can actually park the bus. And Esther said, an upstream comment, I don't think that it, it will be zoned so that we could park our bus anywhere in the area that we would really like to live. And Jerry said, well, you never know. And so they started putting out feelers to different people. And they were right. Everything was millions and millions and millions of dollars, and none of it was allowing the parking of the bus. And so Jerry and Esther stopped thinking about it, but vibrational escrow never stops thinking about it. You get the sense of this? When you put things in vibrational escrow and the you that you really are has already become it, it's a done deal vibrationally. It's only a matter of you finding a way to get your thoughts in the direction of what you are wanting. That's all. That's why we call it the art of allowing. Step one, ask. You did that. Step two, answer. We did that. Step three is your work. You've got to line up with what you're asking for. So... Someone that Jerry and Esther, Jerry had known this person 30 years ago, Esther had never met him, came to their San Diego gathering a few weeks ago and introduced himself to Jerry and said that he was a mortgage broker and that he was also a real estate person. And Jerry just tossed out lightly, yeah, we're looking for a place down by the ocean where we'll have a view and certainly a feel of the water where we can park our bus. And the house isn't so important to us, but we really want land where we can park our bus. And he smiled and went away. And within a few days, called them and said, I have five properties for you to see. And Jerry and Esther said, oh, we're really busy, but let's meet and have a bite to eat and we'll go take a look. And they went to the first property. Incidentally, of the five properties, it was the only one they could see that day because the gate wouldn't open on one and the push button wouldn't open on another and the person didn't want them in in the other because they needed 24-hour notice. So it turned out that they saw only this property. And when they walked on this property, which is zoned, there's a great big yard with a great big gate. They can park their great big bus and they can see the great big ocean and they can feel the wonderful air. Everything that they want is right there. And this man said, here it is. And they said, thank you very much. In other words, it was effortless. It was easy. It came right to them. They had to make no effort about it. You see what we're getting at? So what is, what, what is the path? How do you know that you're on your path? You're having a good time. That's how you know you're on your path. But so how do I how do I go then in the morning to the day? Like what what I have to put my focus on something? I cannot just feel good all day long. I mean, I... <laughs> I mean, I do feel good every day. It doesn't matter what happens anyway. But I'm it just concerns me a little bit. You know, feeling good is not gonna. It is. It is. I know it is actually. <laughs> Well, you see, you see, you've got one foot in both worlds. You're speaking, you're speaking both perspectives. You're saying what most people say, you got to do something about it. And we say, you have to line up your vibration and then do whatever you feel inspired to do. And so the key really, it's interesting because this is the way we want you to see this. What you've been living relative to the subject that you want to talk about has caused you to create the perfect next step that will just knock your socks off. It is so wonderful. But you can't see it from where you are. Just like Jerry and Esther and what they were living caused them to create the perfect house to buy in Del Mar even though they couldn't find it. In other words, it was there in vibrational escrow. So, and now it's in another kind of escrow. (laughs) So, (laughs) nice to know, isn't it? So, as it's there already, now the human action-oriented mind says, well, if it's there, then I've got to do logical things that make me take steps toward it. And then you say, and I can't really do that because I don't know what it is and I don't know where it is. I don't know how to go about it. And what we want you to hear, this is the answer. Sorry, it took so long for us to get around to. (laughs) Not really. We meant everything we said. 
you don't have to think about this life-giving, prosperity-giving career in order to be moving swiftly toward it. In fact, if it's bothering you, it's better if you don't think about it to swiftly move toward it. This is the thing that is so interesting that most people don't understand at all. Step one is you've asked, and step two is it's there, not just waiting but calling you toward it. Step three is use anything and everything as your excuse to get happy. And as you are feeling better, now you must move with the stream and you'll move right in to view where it will be obvious to you and oh it is so delicious for us to see you once you get the hang of this and you understand that being happy is the work feeling good is the work and but if you're depressed feeling happy isn't the work getting rage is the work and if you're in rage getting happy isn't the work feeling frustration is the work and if you're in frustration getting happy isn't the work getting hopeful is the work and if you're hopeful getting happy isn't the work believing or is the work and if you're believing then knowing is the work and about then you start feeling real real happy in fact, happy starts sort of showing its face somewhere around hopefulness, doesn't it? So when you realize that your work is just to use anything and everything to make yourself feel better and that what you want is a done deal already over there waiting for you, now you are experiencing the art of allowing. So if I feel like the happiness, for example, for one part of my things I do is like the acting, but not passion for it, just happiness, should I do anything with that or should I just... Well, here's the thing. We want you to be happy about the burrito you're eating today. We want you to be happy about the sunset. We want you to be happy about the people that you know. We want you to be happy that you're free to move about. We want you to be happy about an industry that employs people like you. We want you to be happy about the fact that money is flowing. We want you to be happy about the fact that people like to see you. In other words, there, there are so many things that you can be happy about. What we're saying to you is you don't have to just be happy about the specific subject of your work. And in fact, if your work is troubling you, then be happy about other things that are easy to be happy about and the path to your work will begin to light up for you. It's like people that are looking for a specific mate or a relationship. We always say, most of the time, get your mind off of that because you've trained yourself into such upstream thoughts about it that every time you think about it, you don't move toward what you want, you move away from it. This may help you. Every subject is two subjects. What is wanted and opposite of what is wanted. So when you pick up the stick called my career, one end of it feels wonderful and the other end of it feels awful. And you can tell by the way you feel which end of the stick is more active within you. So we say leave money out of the equation leave your lover out of the equation leave the specifics of your work out of the equation don't try to figure it out life has caused you to figure it out this is the thing that most people don't understand people will come to a gathering like this and they'll say well I should go to a mental workshop or I should begin to set goals and we say all of that is nice but it's not the work that you think that it is your exposure to life is what's causing you to do the asking and you have done the asking you have created through what you've lived a phenomenal career and you say well then tell me what it is and we say do your best to feel a little better every day than you felt the day before and within a really short time 30 days is plenty enough time you will be in the vicinity of it enough that you will say there it is I see your face I recognize you I can feel the essence of you I've been building you for so many years and there you are we're not kidding you about it at all Okay. So, <laughs> no, so no, I get it. You do get it. Yeah. So, so the the key is, so, so, so take us through your day. What's a day like with you? What do you do first thing? Getting up six a.m. and and m meditating, visualizing, kind right. of how I want to see how I want the right. day to be. All right. So, so. As you sit to meditate and you quiet your mind, your vibration raises. And that is a powerful and wonderful way to start the day.